I can be cute too. Or at least try to be cute, but you know, that's always silly. So, to expound upon the astrological wisdom of the universe, and to inform you all, you know, I'm not sure any of you have access to my chart, so we'll put this out into the world. Please don't use it against me. I'm not going over everything, but it's kind of your basic shenanigans. So, I'm a Pisces sun, and this has to do with keeping one. Is it worth your time to stick by this dreamer who is sometimes so detached he or she forgets to eat? Definitely. And you won't need a course in hypnotherapy or a lifetime membership in a substance abuse support group. One of the misconceptions about Pisces is that he or she flees from life. This couldn't be further from the truth. Pisces absorbs life. All water signs are emotional creatures, but Pisces is an empath who feels and senses other people's emotions and motives. Fish hone in on subtle undercurrents at home, the office, and with relatives and friends. And your Pisces is the one with the proverbial shoulder to cry upon. All the signs instinctively seek the fish's sympathetic ear and non-judgmental attitude. In turn, Pisces needs to download some of this information to you in order to release the tension it creates within his or her psyche. It's a selective process because the fish is a storehouse of secrets, confidences, even shocking facts that others have willingly shared, which he or she will never disclose. It's this discrimination in passing along the day's events that causes your Pisces to repeat one story to you several times in several versions displaying several emotional states in the telling. Your fish must release the negative energy, but will rarely break a confidence. Listen to him or her, but understand that Pisces isn't asking for advice or help. He or she is simply releasing an emotional overload, like a tea kettle releases steam. Pisces also needs periods of solitude. Help yours rejuvenate by creating a private quiet space at home where he or she can read, record thoughts in a journal, or simply catch one of his or her frequently needed naps. <laughs> no sign is as dedicated to romance as is Pisces. Yours will set the mood in his or her mind long before you lock eyes and lips. Your fish adores small tokens of love, brief notes in his or her lunch sack, funnier romantic greeting cards, or a sexy voicemail message, all to prove that your Pisces is never out of your thoughts. Later, you'll be rewarded for your thoughtfulness in a very delightful way. All fish love water, so remember to buy bath salts, bath oil, and bubble bath in a variety of scents and colors. A bath for two is one of Pisces' favorite foreplays. Most have aching feet, and you'll make points by giving yours a foot massage or splurging on high-quality foot spa. Pisces' health can be fragile, and fish tire easily. Help keep yours in tip-top shape with regular exercise, swimming is ideal, and nutritious meals prepared together and presented with a flourish. Pisces' ego is directed outward toward humanity. This leaves precious little inner reserve, so help yours stay balanced with frequent verbal head pats and lots of emotional support. Your fish is an idealist at heart. Even the strong, silent ones wish for a perfect world and spend a great deal of time thinking about how to help make that ideal a reality. The symbol of two fish swimming in opposite directions symbolizes an inward search for enlightenment, as well as the outer lure of human comfort and pleasure. Yes, this sign seems to have a natural proclivity for falling victim to substance and or emotional abuse. Usually, this only happens when Pisces feels trapped in a dead-end life. Understand that money, fame, or career success has nothing whatsoever to do with how Pisces feels about life. The key to his or her inner nature is whether or not your fish is true to him or herself. Share your Pisces' dreams and oh, add a few of your own, mix well, and presto! You'll have the secret formula for a magic or magical for a magical mating with a sensitive, romantic, kind-hearted lover who will make your home a safe harbor and your happiness one of his or her missions in 
life. My moon is in Capricorn. Capricorn moons can be as cold and emotionless as the real moon. This is the moon of genius and madness, brooding and selfishness. This placement adds an unsympathetic, antisocial, and power-hungry edge to the most laid-back sun sign. Romantically, these natives are often cruel, nagging, and unforgiving to the point of cutting all emotional ties. If a lover doesn't behave exactly as told and or expected, this is the power broker moon, scheming, ruthless, determined. If this one wants you, he or she will come to you. The Capricorn moon is likely to be ambitious at the expense of any personal life. These natives often have serious difficulty relating, trusting, or opening up with a potential partner. They are either formal and distant or emotional cripples who connect so tightly to their partner that the relationship is smothered. They can hold a grudge longer than a Scorpio and take longer to assess, measure, and find a partner than the most anal Virgo. Most astrologers agree that Scorpio and Capricorn are the two most difficult places for the moon to live. Virgo runs a close third. Excessive worry, unwillingness to understand or associate with anyone with a differing viewpoint, and suppressed affection to the point of withdrawal can also affect these natives. Capricorn moons can suffer terrible inner loneliness because they have no idea how to develop truly intimate relationships. Like the Capricorn sun, these natives often suffer several broken relationships in youth and find happiness after midlife. Very often, the restricted personal happiness of these natives paradoxically brings success through public charities and prestigious well-esteemed careers. The practical ambition, responsibility, and excellent organizational skill of the Capricorn moon produce some of the most successful and powerful businesses and government leaders, or business and government leaders. Aquarius Thomas Edison, Cancer John Glenn, Scorpio Robert Kennedy, and Aquarius Abraham Lincoln are some examples. Double Capricorn Moon Marion Davis Davies was the companion of Taurus William Randolph Hearst for 30 years. While Davies' personal life was classic Capricorn, fraught with ill health and sudden loss of fortunes, and subject to vilification by the moral code of the times, her public persona was one of a warm-hearted, funny, and very caring person. On the other hand, double Capricorn Federico Fellini said, I live in the doubts of my duty. I think there is dignity in this, just to go on working. Taurus Capricorn, oh, these are different ones, so I guess I should read the yeah, Pisces Capricorn, lives life backward. One of the oldest souls, this is the child who assumes too much duty too fast and spends the rest of life lightening the load. A worrywart who falls oh, at least once for the user abuser. It's been more than once. So my Venus is in Aries. Dangerous liaisons, power struggles, envy, drama, and torrid sex. Aries and Venus people love it hot, raunchy, and frequently frightening. Male or female, they are charismatic, arrogant, and very confident in all areas of life. Aries Venus has a force of will and absolute energy that respects nature's raw power. Directed outward, this combination is a born mover and shaker. Directed inward, this coupling produces a character whose interest lies in control and domination of an endless procession of unlucky lovers. The Aries and Venus character runs hot and cold. What turns them on in the morning might just as easily disgust them in the afternoon. These characters are prone to snap judgments, hopping into bed five minutes after you meet them, marrying in haste, and not hanging around long enough to repent. So I'm going to read the female and male because they still apply and it's silly shenanigans. So let's start with the female Venus, Aries Venus. So you're no Snow White and proud of it. You are territorial, possessive, and prone to saying exactly what you think. Devil be damned. You have an obvious sexual energy that continually smolders no matter what your sun sign. Think of Aquarius Lana Turner, Taurus Deborah Winger, 
You want a man who isn't afraid to stir up some conflict now and then, but who is still who is willing to play faithful sidekick versus action hero over the long term. You are perfectly capable of opening your own doors and lighting your own cigar. However, you are also testing and manipulating the one you love. So, on occasion, you stamp your feet and howl to see how fast and how high your lover will jump. Male Aries Venus Your ideal woman is tough, hard to get, and very independent. Whether quiet or bold, you need breathing room and someone who won't mind if you stay out with the boys or girls a few nights a week. Think of Pisces Ted Kennedy, Gemini Drew Carey. On the other hand, you might stay out a few months, so she should be a good sport too. You love arguing and making up, and you don't mind if she forces you to undress and climbs on top. Wishy-washy is something you can't stand. If she's got a past, a dog collar, or a pair of fur-lined handcuffs, you're liable to fall for her in a heartbeat. And then my Mars is in Cancer. Cancer's watery nature weakens the passion of Mars, where it becomes darkly subtle and overly sensitive. Cancer Mars natives have often been at war with or the victims of their mother or another nurturing parent figure during childhood. As an adult, he or she is usually protective of the home they've created, which is the only place he or she feels totally secure. Highly intuitive, critical, and possessive, this combination is the most easily turned off Oh, is the most easily turned off of the Mars configurations. If Cancer Mars feels his or her partner is not responding properly, the fires of passion can instantly turn to icebergs of disinterest or volcanoes of anger. As with any other Cancer placement, these natives tend to cling to unhappy relationships. Cancer and Mars often produces a constant moody irritation and regular temperamental outburst. Female Cancer Mars. Mars and Cancer makes you passionate about feeling secure, and without feeling safe, you will never feel like heating up the sheets. Your emotions are shaky, and you frequently work yourself into a frenzy over imagined tragic scenarios that never materialize. Your ideal lover is a romance novel hero, deeply passionate, macho, but vulnerable, and someone who can simultaneously rescue you and need you. Think of Pisces Liza Minnelli, Virgo Rebecca de Mornay. Your love can be deep, powerful, and forever, providing you live long enough to find a real-life Rhett Butler. Male Cancer Mars. Unruly, moody, and vulnerable, your passions are never far from the surface and threaten to erupt at the slightest provocation. Think of Virgo Richard Gere, Scorpio Burt Lancaster. You are an emotional catch-22, which I had that book sitting over there. Are you a macho, assertive caveman, or a sensitive, vulnerable peacekeeper? You crave family, home, and hearth, but fear losing your independence in the trade. Your ideal lover is so responsive that he or she can read your mind and sense your moods before they swing. A psychic connection sends you into ecstasy. I appreciate this information because it is, it's fairly on point, you know? I do stress about things, I'm always slightly conflicted and dueling in nature, plus I do have a really bad temper, so if you like being yelled at, anyone out there, I will yell at you. But the thing about it is it has to be genuine, like I cannot not just, I cannot just yell at people you know, because they want me to. It's like I have to actually be mad at you and then yell at you. And I, I think some people are into that kind of thing. I just have to... I don't know. I have to figure out what to do with my life and I have no idea. And how, how can one be cute? How can I be all cute if I'm so angry and mean all the time and grumpy and cold and ruthless? Hopefully I'll figure it out. But maybe I will just dance. Because that's at least entertaining to the measses. The measses of yeses. Yeah. Please don't use this information against me. I hope you appreciate it. Okay, bye. Oh, 
and and to further put my life you know out there into the universe and what have you then then there's this is there anything wrong with me you're fine Lauren it's your head so there's nothing wrong with my body no 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 so there's nothing wrong with, with my body like you tell me all the time there's nothing wrong with my body I'm starting my day I choose what comes into my head and You just you told me, I just asked you if I could record you saying this, that there is nothing wrong with my body, because you've said it a hundred thousand times whenever I've asked you. That's cool, but I'll cut it off when they learn. No, please say what you just said. You're fine. I choose what my environment is and what gets in So my body is good, yes. and you think I am healthy and up to snuff is basically what you're telling yeah, but me. you got some other parameters or something. No, I just take into consideration other people's opinions. Uh, yeah, they're fucking opinions, the trolls. Go listen to the trolls. I don't know what to make of this sometimes. All of everything. Really, really. It's like... If things are wrong, I have to trust that science is accurate, but there's conflicting science, and then there's... Yeah! Confused. I'm very fucking confused with life. In all the realms and reasons. Like, you know, how can it... But this does happen with many people's perspectives, I find, too. Like, how can I have a conversation with someone about something very, like... I think some people have cognitive dissonance, and I'm not saying that I'm not also blind at times, you know, I mean, I think everyone is in a different place, but it's really hard when, like, you're trying to talk to people, even, like, proposed authorities about things in life, and no one actually takes you seriously, like, that's a really shitty thing to experience, not only with regard to health, but with regard to like justice and the law, with regard to, you know, those, those are pretty much my two big ones because, I mean, if, if you're like, hey, and especially, like, I mean, honestly, we're all well aware that established authorities, like, not always, but like, for the most part, pretty useless, you know, but, at home and like with your per interpersonal relationships in, <laughs> excuse me in your life and with your friends and your family you know my family and I are pretty divergent on more than one opinion and that's okay but people around you know if it's really hard for anyone to actually acknowledge like some of the darker elements of reality and I don't blame them because it it's hard to do so but I think if people could actually do that, then maybe, 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 maybe the world could be a little bit better of a place. And we could like reevaluate our existences and figure out what the fuck to do about everything. This is my humble opinion. And my putting people in my life fucking out there into the world, so. I mean, yes, I am pretty wild and crazy in some ways, but certain levels of reinforcement and upbringing are most definitely not helping either, you know? Not to mention, like, going places and sobbing and crying and, you know, it's, it's like the same trying to tell apparent authorities, like, are you just not seeing it, or are you too oblivious to and then i'm around other humans who like do see some of these things too perhaps i must reevaluate my friends groups and associations you know that that wouldn't be bad 